Okay, so this is actually a little different. We're going to be, it's not going to be actually me giving you a speech. I'm actually going to be asking questions of my caucus. We're going to ask them questions. We're going to get hopefully personal. I want them to share some personal stories. Uh, not that personal, but just a little personal. Um, hopefully you're inspired by some of their answers. I have been given the tremendous honor of getting to know these great folks. Uh, they all have incredible stories. They've got different reasons why they got into politics, so we'll dig into some of that. I want to start off the first question. It's going to go to Blake. Some of these are going to be open-ended. People just throw their hands up if they want to answer. This one is going to go to Blake. And it is inspired by one of the first times I met Blake. We were hanging outside waiting to go into an event, and we were waiting at a playground. And there were a couple of kids that were playing, and Blake just walked up to them. They were indigenous kids, and started speaking to them and teaching them language, the language that it turns out they both spoke the similar language, and watching that happen as just kind of off to the side, I could see those kids get so inspired, and I'm like, we need to get Blake elected. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what would your advice be, thinking about those young kids that you were hanging out with, I'm sure you do that all the time, but advice to young people wanting to get into politics, maybe people who don't feel like they belong in politics, maybe people who've often felt like it's not a space for them, and I know that's something maybe you've felt as well, what would you say to a young person, maybe someone in this crowd that could be a future MP? Uh, what, would, what would you say to them? What would be your advice? Well, first of all, thanks, Jagmeet, and thanks to such a remarkable caucus for what I think is a group of people who support young people. And when I first got involved in the idea of running for politics, it was on this, it was something that people told me would never be done. Blake, a brown kid like you can't win in a conservative stronghold seat in Alberta. I was told that many times over and over and over again. And the challenges that young people have, it aren't just those challenges. The reality is young people are also facing a kind of globe and a kind of future that is disproportionately gonna impact them from climate change to the economy. It's hurting young people disproportionately. And so it's up, gonna be up to young people to put their name forward, to fight for the kind of Canada that we wanna see. Yep. Because solidarity doesn't is not owned by one group of people. Solidarity right. is not owned by one class of people. It's owned by all of us. Hey. And until young people take hold of that message and fight for that message, not just in the streets, but in electoral politics, when we take electoral politics for the next generation, we'll change this country. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Blake. Appreciate it. Hold it right there, because the next question is going to go to Leah. Uh, we talked about, we heard an incredible speech from Premier Eby. I was so inspirational. And he mentioned a big victory that we recently celebrated, the victory of the first First Nation Premier of a province in the history of our country with Wab Kanu. And I gotta tell you, the Manitoba NDP team fought so hard and I have a lot of things they can teach us about how to beat conservatives. So question to, to Leah, tell me about what that victory meant, what does it mean for Manitobans, what does it mean for the country, and some lessons on how to be conservatives. Well, I'm a proud Manitoban, and I always say all good things come from Manitoba, including the president of the CLC, B. Ross. <laughs> Woo! Just throwing that You're out here there. That. And, yeah. you know, we threw it down in Manitoba. The conservatives, like they're doing federally or running on, as B. mentioned, rage farming. They're, they were running campaigns that were rooted in hate and racism. And I can tell you for many Manitobans, it was a very scary time because it really was a question about what kind of world do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a world where human rights are disregarded, including the rights of the trans community that is currently under attacked kids in school? Or do we want to uphold human rights? And I can tell you, what we learned in this election is human rights is a winner. Making sure nobody is left behind is a winner. Standing up for injustice and doing things like making sure the women in the landfill are brought home is a winner. And ensuring everybody can live in dignity is a winner. So yes, uh, we can do it federally. It's gonna take a lot of work. And it's going to take a lot of door knocking and we're going to have to get everybody uh, out. But it can be done. We won in ridings where we shouldn't have won and we won. 
So it Love can it. be done. Love it. Thank you, Leah. That's awesome. Thank you. We need that message. So I mentioned I want to get personal, and this is some folks. I actually didn't learn, know the answer to this question until maybe a couple of years into being a leader of the party. And so I'm going to ask this as a question going to Don, because I want you to share a little bit about what inspires you to get into politics. Uh, if you can get a little personal, if that's okay, because I know you've got a personal story about some of the struggles you faced growing up that people probably wouldn't know, no, just me seeing you, your, your lawyer or previously, lawyer with the Teamsters, and people wouldn't know some of, yeah, big shout out to that. Probably people wouldn't know some of the struggles that you face, and I feel like it's important for us as a movement to know that uh, we represent people from all walks of life and maybe share a bit of what inspires you to get into politics. Oh, thanks, Jagmeet. Um, well, I'm not sure which particular um, inspirational story uh, you might be referring to, Jagmeet, but I, I, I was just, uh, there's several of them. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot a note to keep it humble. I guess yeah. that it was missed. <laughs> I was missed there. <laughs> That came out wrong. Um, but I admit, I have a lot to be humble about, is what I was thinking about. You know, I was brought up in a working-class family in Edmonton. Um, my mother was... Uh, neither of my parents finished high school. Um, my dad had to quit in grade 11 to look after his, uh, his grandparents. My mother had to quit high school as well. And, uh, um, you know, my dad struggled with alcoholism and uh, was intermittently employed for, for most of our life. And my mom really raised our family on a double day and, and on a 10-month school secretary uh, salary. And um, I think, you know, I, growing up, I, I just always felt a natural affinity and a concern for um, my, my community and the people around us who I think also... Uh, had similar struggles. And so when my sister and I were the first in our generation, uh, first in our families ever to go to university, um, I always knew that I wanted to use whatever education I was fortunate enough to get uh, to try to make our society better. And so I, I ended up becoming a lawyer and I became, uh, I did, decided to use my law degree to help working people and I spent 16 years uh, working for the Teamsters Union, defending workers in grievances and at the labor board. And I, I, I just want to say, you know, I don't think any of us on this stage would be here without the sacrifice, the volunteerism, the, uh, the strength and the support of the labor movement. So you're I want here. to thank every you're single here. person in this room who works for a trade union for your support. And hopefully we'll bring a government uh, that will actually govern in the interests of working people in this country as is long overdue. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Um, thank you. That was, that was the story I was alluding to. It was all that. So you nailed it. Um, this is kind of an open question for anyone they want to answer, so just kind of throw your hands up. Uh, what do you think is something important to keep in mind when you decide to run for office? What do you personally keep in mind, something that's important to you to remember to hold to your heart when you make that decision to run for office and when you are currently doing the work that you do? Uh, anyone, whoever wants to throw their hand up, uh, feel free, no, no pressure. This is the first time I've ever seen politicians with a mic but no one wants to talk yet. <laughs> we're, we're good. You know, Jigmeet, there's a lot that happens in Ottawa that, in my opinion, is completely removed from the material conditions of people in my community. So I talk about our, our job, our job as parliamentarians, but our work is always in our constituencies. And our commitment in our offices is to improve those material conditions, to connect people to the process of government. We heard it in a panel earlier today. You know, my staff is here all of us have a team around us that serve in our communities to get those benefits and entitlements that people deserve, sometimes in the thousands, sometimes in the tens of thousands of dollars. And any time I feel like I'm caught in that bubble in Ottawa, I come back here, I jump on a city bus, I, I go to an event, I talk to people, I listen, and I'm reminded about why it is that when you elect more new Democrats, you actually do the work of improving people's material conditions. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Did anyone else, that was awesome, I appreciate it. Did anyone else want to weigh in on that question? I can go to another one. I see, I see, Alexandre, yeah. j'ai eu une question en français pour vous aussi, mais ça, ça fonctionne. It's okay, it's okay, Jack Meat. But I think that, first, before my answer, I think that what you're doing with us today is some kind of uh, training and practice. Because we're a bunch of people, we are pretty good to ask questions. Now you're practicing us to 
the able at question period to answer oh, questions. Oh, yeah. Bravo. That's a good one. Bravo. 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 So thank you I, for I that, Brady. I didn't think of that. That's a good one. That was subliminal almost. <laughs> Love it. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it going. Um, top issues in your writings that you're hearing from your constituents. The top things that people are mentioning to you, just to get a sense. I mean, these are folks that represent writings across the country, and maybe it resonates with people in the room. So the top things that you're hearing in your writings. Anyone want to? Yes, Lori. Yeah. Lori Yidlaud, everybody. <laughs> Nunavut. We saw you break down the dance moves today, Lori. Um, I wanted to start off in Inuktitut, my language. Here, here. To remind uh, all indigenous peoples that you can be up here too as a member of parliament. Yeah, yeah. As indigenous peoples in Canada, um, Canada has worked very hard to eradicate indigenous peoples, and we're still living that trauma, uh, intergenerational trauma. Uh, is still talked about. It's, we still experience it every day, uh, so much so that there's lateral violence. Uh, we, we are mean to each other. Uh, we are mean to others that are not like us. So uh, while housing is always the biggest issue, uh, trying to remind people that, there's, that we must shift our conversation from intergenerational trauma to talking about intergenerational love. Mm. so that we can talk about um, Beautiful. forgiveness and not to live always in your life with anger and pain, but to shift from uh, that to having love and forgiveness. Mm. And what I would say about being in this amazing NDP caucus, by the way, another great celebration with this caucus is... Uh, once you join the federal NDP, uh, you will be welcomed with love. Uh, I always tell my constituents, uh, Nunavut has only one seat, but because of this great caucus, I have 24 other great colleagues with me that speak for Beautiful. Nunavut. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. This is another one that on the more personal side, uh, we all know that folks fighting for justice have to fight an uphill battle. It's a lot of fighting against the odds and can be sometimes tough to do that. So what are some of your practices that you do maybe daily to keep that optimism, your daily practice to remind yourself to, to keep on fighting that important fight? Because I know it's tough sometimes and I think it's, it's honest to say that sometimes we feel down. But what do you do, a daily practice you do that helps you persevere, that keeps you inspired? Anyone want to jump on that? That's an open one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alistair. Alistair McGregor. Uh, thanks, Chuck Meat. Um, many of you may remember former Member of Parliament uh, Jean Crowder. Um, I had the honor of working for her uh, for seven years as a caseworker. And so when this job, uh, and you know, we've referred to the Ottawa bubble, the pace of work and the craziness that happens in the House of Commons, any time that starts getting to me, uh, I think back uh, to those days when I was sitting across the table from constituents who were really at the end of their rope and had nowhere else to go, because that's what inspired me to get into politics in the first place. When Jean Crowder announced her retirement after seven years of sitting across the table from people who were in tears, had nowhere else to go. I couldn't abandon that work. That became a vocational calling for me. So anytime this job starts getting rough for me, I think about the people in my community who need me to keep on going on. And you know, that, that kind of, uh, that emotional release that you have seen from your constituents, that lights a fire inside of you. And I think it lights a fire in all of us. 
And we are a small caucus, but we are a mighty caucus. And I'm so proud to serve with a group of people who every single day is going into the House of Commons and punching well above our weight and forcing this tired Liberal government to enact the progressive policies we need to see for working people from coast to coast to coast. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Building on that, anyone else want to jump in on that? What keeps you inspired? What keeps you persevering? What keeps you going forward? Yeah, Charlie. Did you, did you want to go? go? Okay. I saw Charlie first. Um, you know... Uh, Charlie Angus, everybody. I was 10 years old, and my grandmother said to me, you've got to watch this. And it was Stephen Lewis. And he was talking about the mining widows. And my grandmother was an immigrant mining widow. And Stephen Lewis was fighting for the lung cancer compensation for the hard rock mining families in my region. And she said to me, you listen to that man. Nobody else speaks for us. So, you know, sometimes it's stressful. Big deal. It's a lot more stressful for people who have no voice. We are their voice. That's why we are here. Yeah. Beautiful. So... When we see fraud artists come into our region to rip people off, like Pierre Polyev, to say a guy who had a paper route and lives in a 19-room mansion is a voice of the working class, I call bullshit. <laughs> I call that out because I think of people like my grandmother who lived on a widow's pension from a mine death and said that the NDP were the voice. That's what we do. So yeah, I drink red wine and listen to rock and roll late at night when I'm stressed. But it's not about me. It's about who we represent and saying to them, you have a voice, you will not be left behind, and we will never, ever abandon you. That's the difference between us and those fraud artists. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Gord, did you want on, on this one as well? Uh, this is a question, just to kind of turn it around a little upon a positive note a little bit. I mean, all of this is important. But uh, just to reflect on what was your, maybe I'll get Brian to start on this one. Because he's, uh, he's been at it for a long time, so it's going to be a tough question for you. What has been your best day in politics? A day where you're like, this, this feels good. A day where you, you, know, you look back and say, that was one of my best days. Uh, I, I, unequivocally, it's got to be the time that we pass same-sex marriage. Oh, Beautiful. And, and the reason why is the courts had already spoke, and we even actually had a false vote at that point. But I know other MPs that did not want that. But that, to me, was the moment of social justice that switched in Canada, where positive people stood forth and put themselves on the line like never before to create the society that we want to have. And so I'll never forget that moment. It was beautiful because it was about a country that can be united for all the right reasons. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. That was awesome. Uh, anyone, anyone else want to build on that? Is that, a, is that a question that speaks to you? Yeah, Carol's got one. Go for it. Oh, no, you, you go. Merci, uh, Jack Mead. Euh, je pense que je vais juste parler d'un événement qui s'est passé euh, dans mes premières années que j'ai été élue. Et puis, c'était un homme qui, qui est venu nous voir. Il, avait, euh, il nous disait, écoute, euh, j'ai une bataille avec la compensation et puis il n'y a pas personne qui veut m'aider. Mais j'ai dit, écoute, euh, je suis fédéral et non provincial. Ben il dit, écoute, il n'y a pas personne qui veut m'aider. J'ai été au député fédéral avant, j'ai été au député provincial, j'ai été à des organisations et je sais que mon cas devrait être gagné. Alors finalement, un de mes adjoints a dit, je vais regarder à sa filière, il a regardé à la filière puis il a dit, il a raison. Alors on a décidé que même si ce n'était pas un enjeu fédéral, on était pour l'aider autant qu'on peut. Et puis l'homme a eu, euh, je crois que c'était comme, c'était un gros montant, là. Je pense que c'était comme 80 000 de l'or qu'il lui devait. Wow. Et puis, il est parti à broyer, puis il dit, il n'y a jamais personne qui voulait nous écouter, puis tu étais la seule, puis c'est parce que tu es NPD. Alors, c'est pour ça qu'on est là, c'est pour aider les gens. 
Je vais te dire, l'homme est, est revenu à mon bureau, puis il a, il a déposé 1000 dollars sur le bureau, puis il a dit, ça, c'est pour m'avoir aidé. Puis j'ai dit, écoute, on peut pas vous aider comme ça. On peut pas prendre les fonds. Ben, il dit, mon garçon, il a pas pu aller à l'école. J'ai pas pu l'envoyer à l'université au collège parce que j'avais pas les fonds. Et puis, je veux te remercier, mais j'ai dit, écoute, tu m'as dit ça, là. Pourquoi tu vas pas faire des bourses aux écoles? Et c'est exactement ça qu'il a fait à 500 dollars à une école anglaise et 500 dollars à une école française. Alors, c'est ça qu'on est là pour. On est là pour écouter et je vais jamais oublier, euh, qu'est-ce que Gilles Bisson m'avait dit. Il dit peut-être que les gens ont beaucoup de problèmes, mais la meilleure affaire à faire, c'est de les écouter puis commencer avec le premier pour essayer de les aider à travers de tous. Alors, c'est là qu'on est là pour écouter et pour aider à régler les problèmes. Merci. Merci. I really thank you so much for that answer. Merci infiniment pour la, la réponse. Ça, ça fait la différence d'avoir une, une députée NPD. Merci pour, pour partager ça. Oui. I spent time recently in, in Taylor's writing. So this question is about kind of northern issues. So it doesn't have to only be Taylor, but I'm just thinking Taylor's right here and why not? Uh, <laughs> so a lot of confidence in you there. In proximity, it's all that. Um, We, we often feel, and, and spending time in northern communities, I know this is a feeling that northern communities are, are so literally, in terms of proximity, so far away from Ottawa, they feel ignored, forgotten. I know that was a sentiment that we, we heard on the road. Uh, tell us a bit about some of the needs that differ for rural northern communities that, and, and ways that are different from what we would normally imagine maybe in, in larger urban centers. Maybe talk a bit about that. Sure. Well, first of all, I would say that um, we're a party that has its roots in rural Saskatchewan. And yeah, that's right. And the idea at the heart of social democracy is that we're stronger when we look after each other, when we stand together. And as someone who grew up in a tiny rural community of about 200 people and went to a, a two-room elementary school, I can tell you without a doubt that those same values lie at the heart of rural communities in Canada. And we're the party that can speak to those folks because rural communities in our country, northern communities in our country, are struggling because of the lack of good public services, because of the lack of public transportation, because of the, the climate crisis, which is putting so many communities in peril. This summer, we saw hundreds of thousands of Canadians evacuated from their homes, And most of those communities were in rural Canada. So standing up for rural communities means a few things. It means standing for good public services, whether it's passport services, detox and treatment services, transportation services. Wow. It means fighting for climate justice so that communities in rural Canada have what it takes to survive the floods and the fires right. of the times that we're living in. And finally, because rural Canada is also the unceded land of Indigenous people, it means standing for Indigenous justice, wow. because the interests of rural Canada and the interests of Indigenous people are inseparable. We live together on the same land, and we need a government that stands up for the, the situations that we're facing, particularly for the situations that Indigenous communities and Indigenous people face. So those are some ideas, how we as a party can stand for rural Canada. Thank wow. you. Wow, that was beautiful. That was really well done. <laughs> No, just hold that mic for a second. That was good. That was great. Uh, did anyone else want to weigh in on, on northern or rural issues? I can keep on going to other questions. Um, this is kind of like the best part of your job, but kind of like highlights or surprising things, like things that you didn't really expect or, or a highlight from your time so far as in member of parliament. So kind of like your best day, but, but a highlight, something special, Something that was a surprising part, maybe, of your job. I see Heather wants to get in on this. Maybe you folks can pass it over to Heather. Heather McPherson, everyone. Yeah, so you all know that when I was first elected, I was the, the only new Democrat between sort of Rocky Mountain House, or sorry, Rocky Mountain House, Winnipeg and the Rocky Mountains. And, and I got there because of the incredible work that Linda Duncan had done beforehand. Um, but... <laughs> But I got to tell you, getting on that plane to come to Ottawa, sitting with conservatives, listening to conservatives tell me 
that climate change isn't real, having conservatives tell me why I'm not going to get this seat again, and then, because of the incredible hard work of Blake Desjardins, to be able to double the Alberta caucus. <laughs> yes, it's a great feeling. I, like, it is, Alberta caucus. It is, it is a good feeling, and the best feeling of all is the fact that in the next election, we're doubling it again. Hey, now. Love it. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking right at some candidates right there. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe for, for Lisa Marie as a new MP, one of the new, we've got uh, Lori, Bonita, Blake, and Lisa Marie as our, our newest class of uh, elected MPs. Um, you have that mic there. Uh, something surprising, some highlight of the day. This is going to Lisa Marie. <laughs> Taylor's trying to be funny there, I think. <laughs> Lisa Marie, take it away. What was the His question is like, um, highlights from your time recently as an MP, something surprising about the job, something maybe that, you, that you've experienced that, that you want to share maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, when I got elected in 2021, I had never even stepped foot in Ottawa before. So what a shock it was to get off the plane and walk into, uh, you know, this whole world and bubble that Ottawa very much is. And um, I had never considered running in politics before I got asked. And the reason was is because I never saw myself in that position. Mm. I never saw others who were like me in those positions. Um, I was... I'm still raising two children. I'm a single parent and lived in a very low income. The financial barriers to be able to run were huge. Um, and to be able to get elected because of the incredible work of, of members of parliament similar to Heather, those who did the work ahead of me um, for me to get elected was just so inspiring. And, and I, I just want to say that the reason why I ran is because I looked to other women Laurel Collins actually was the person um, that I looked to and I thought she's doing politics the way that I see politics should be done. Politics, wow. yeah. we need less divisiveness, we need more collaboration, we need more of us working together towards solutions and right now the environment in the chamber is quite frankly quite toxic and divisive and so I really lean on the other um, women who are in politics with me for us to be able to, to know that we're not the problem, it's the systems around us. And so there needs to be some, some changes put into place so that we can have increased representation in parliament, increased women in politics. Um, and uh, I'm here to, to do that work along with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Some, some beautiful tender moments here. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Well, maybe because uh, you referenced Laurel and now you're handing the mic to Laurel anyways. A uh, question to Laurel about maybe I know that you're, you're a mom. Uh, I don't know for folks who've ever seen Laurel in Parliament. She's got, she's got her kids with her in Parliament often. Uh, both of her kids have actually been in the chamber. And maybe something that you want to share about what keeps you doing what you do traveling so far, sometimes you bring your kids with you, sometimes they're not able to, maybe share a little bit about what that means for you and how important the work is that you do and, and why you're doing it, maybe reflecting on as a mom maybe as well. Thanks, Jagmeet. And I just want to start off saying that the reason I can do the work that I'm doing as a parent of two young children is because I have Jagmeet and this entire team supporting me. You know, having an environment where women are encouraged to be there, where people will step up and, and support you when you uh, might not have the energy or capacity to do something. It makes the world of difference. You're and here. I'm so You're incredibly here. grateful. And <laughs> I think the question of kind of what keeps us going uh, also connects to this kind of what are our favorite moments in parliament. I had a week in May where we did a week of action to support sexual assault survivors. And they, a group of women came out from my voice, my choice. They were sitting in the uh, gallery watching what happened and to be able to be their voice, to speak the words that they wanted spoken in that space, and then to pass legislation that will change the experience of future survivors, it is, it's, 
it means the world to me. It is the reason that I got involved in politics. And I want that to happen on housing, on climate change, on all of the issues that matter so much to us. So thanks for being in it with us for this work. Beautiful. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, une question en français, c'était une question pour mon uh, chef adjoint, Alexandre Boulouris. Et c'est une question parce que je pense que j'ai jamais posé cette question à toi. Donc, j'ai hâte de savoir la réponse aussi. Mais qu'est-ce qui, qu'est-ce qui vous a incité à vous impliquer à, en politique? Qu'est-ce que c'est la raison, l'histoire un peu? Parce que je ne le sais pas aussi. Donc, quand j'ai lu cette question, j'ai dit, je veux savoir cette euh, réponse. Check, check. OK. Oh, merci. Um, merci beaucoup, Jack Mead, pour la question. C'est une question qui peut, être, qui peut être complexe. La réponse facile, ça serait dire vouloir changer le monde. Mm. Vouloir changer le monde, dans quel sens? Vouloir changer le monde parce qu'on déteste les injustices et on déteste l'exploitation. Et c'est correct d'être indigné. Je trouve que l'indignation est un bon sentiment quand il va vers le fait qu'on veut prendre soin des autres. Oui. Wow. Et je pense que c'est ce qui nous anime tous et toutes ici. À un moment donné, on réalise qu'on n'est pas obligé d'accepter le monde tel qu'il est, avec tous ses défauts, son exploitation, avec tout son mépris parfois, puis son manque de respect. Et puis, les meilleures choses qui sont arrivées dans notre société, que ce soit le progrès pour l'égalité, pour la justice, pour les droits des travailleurs, des travailleuses, ça s'est fait parce qu'il y a eu des luttes. Ça s'est fait parce que des gens qui sont tenus debout. Ça s'est fait parce que des gens qui ont fait du syndicalisme, de l'action communautaire, qui ont été des féministes, qui ont été des gens sur le terrain et au Parlement pour être capable de bâtir une société meilleure. Ça tombe pas du ciel, c'est un travail, puis nous, on le fait, puis pour ça, il faut tous être ensemble. Wow! Merci. Je... Merci infiniment, Alexandre. Okay, uh, I totally mismanaged the time here, so I hope my caucus does not get mad at me. I must have missed a sign somewhere, but we are over time for this section by a good amount. Someone in the back made a gesture of a little bit of desperation, so I have to wrap it up. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> to the folks that I messed up the timing, I don't know how I missed that, but to my caucus folks that didn't get to respond, I hope I can make it up to you in some way. Please don't be mad at me. Um, <laughs> yes, we'll have to translate that as a question period at some point. Uh, thank you, folks. I hope that was a good session. Show some love to the incredible MPs. Appreciate you so much. You're amazing. Right back at you, because we love all of you that are attending. Thank you so much. So what an amazing showcase. Thanks to Jagmeet and our amazing team. I can't wait to join you all in Ottawa. As we close on day one of the NDP convention, we would like to thank you all for being here. What an amazing way to start this weekend. We hope you enjoyed today's events and speakers. Oui, merci à tous et à toutes pour cette merveilleuse première journée. 
j'ai hâte de voir ce que nous réserve le bus de la fin de semaine. But before you go, we want to make sure you know about everything happening this evening. First, right after we wrap up here, the Women's Caucus will be meeting in the Webster Room at 5.15 p.m. Then, our regional caucuses will have their meetings. Starting at 6 p.m., in the Prairie Regional Caucus is going to be in Albion AB. The Northern Regional Caucus is Albion C. The Atlantic Regional Caucus also starts at 6 p.m. in Webster, BC. And delegates are also heading out for an affordability canvas with our amazing local team in Hamilton Mountain. They'll be reading right here at 6.15 p.m. at the Convention Center for snacks, ooh, snacks, and a briefing before they hit the pavement. Guess what? It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned canvasser or if you've never knocked a, knocked a door in your life, you are all welcome because we lost Hamilton Mountain by just 835 votes in the last election. So we're gonna make up those votes starting tonight. Woo! And after that, if you haven't already, don't forget to register for tonight's event. Here's to Hamilton. Join us as we'll celebrate all that new Democrats have accomplished this year, featuring the best local progressive artists and Hamilton musical legends Harrison Kennedy, LT the Monk, and Damian Mitchell. Doors open at 8.30. Your ticket purchase will be a donation to the federal NDP with proceeds going to support our Hamilton Riding Association's Election Readiness Fund. We hope to see you there, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Have a good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Have a good evening.